Hello, everyone, and welcome to another edition of Let's Talk Scuba. As you know, my name is Brian Davis, and this is Brian Davis Scuba. Um, my guest today um, originally hails from Wales, which is actually the land of my ancestors. If you see the way my surname spelt, Davies, uh, my grandfather was Welsh. Hence, I'm wearing a Welsh rugby shirt, but I support England. But this is just out of respect for Chris, because he's a real Welshman. He's got the accent and everything. So Chris has recently published a book, which I'd guess you'd call his memoirs to date, but the book's called The Confessions of a Dive Master. And he's kindly agreed to be interviewed live today. Hopefully we'll get a few stories or names out of him that he could not or would not publish. So as usual, just hit the comments. Um, put them up and we'll look at them as we go along and then we'll put them on the screen and see if we get Chris on the spot on some some of them. So as I say, feel free to ask questions during the live stream and virtually anything goes, no real personal stuff, you know, what were the girls like and all of that. We all know the life of a dive instructor and dive master when they're working pro, you know, so you don't need to embarrass him. Oh, we've got Dave Street, the owner of Proteus Rebreathers, Dive Symptoms. Dive Systems International in the room. Hi, Dave. Um, thanks for joining. Dave's in England. Okay, let's bring Chris in. Chris, how are you? Hey, Brian, how's it going? Greetings from yeah, the Philippines. Well, welcome. And good afternoon, because it's afternoon for you. Or should I say, Grozy Brinhan Dabraud. Come on, give me a bit of <laughs> <laughs> Let's not put everybody off from the start now, Brian. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, you look like you're on the beach, and your life's a bit of a beach, I guess. So, where are you? Um, you know, where where are you? Where are we going live from today? Right now, I'm at uh, Scandi Divers Resort in Puerto Galera, on the island of Mindoro in the Philippines. Right, nice, nice. Yeah. Um, but it doesn't look too busy. No, it's actually dead right now because we're closed down from the pandemic. So we actually have zero guests right now. So I'm wearing my uniform just for a, a joke, really, to be honest. But the, but the, 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 the resort's still kind of ticket over, ready to open when the government... Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we've been, we've been opening and closing for the local guests, you know, for the last uh, six months. But right now we're actually closed because of the, it's hard to get from Manila to here due to the restrictions there. So we shut down again now. So yeah, we can easily reopen. Just takes a little bit of cleaning, and then we'll be off off and running again. Well, I just have got all my paperwork, no tries, birth certificate, all of that. Just about to plan a trip, and then they said no, no more foreigners again. So yeah, I'm, yeah. So I'll I'll hard be to plan over. anything right now. It's not far for me, Scandi. So I'll spend a few days yeah. in Annie and I'll then jump on the banker and come over and annoy you guys. Yes. You're more you than welcome. A, you can give me a few um, camera tips anyway, because you know I'm the GoPro king. And <laughs> for those of you who don't know, you know, Chris is a bit of an accomplished underwater videographer. What was your what's your big claim to fame? What's the coolest thing you have ever happened to you, Chris? Well, some of my video footage opened the uh, the underwater film festival at the Beneath the Sea dive show in uh, in New York a couple of years ago. So Sorry. it was very nice, you know, to open up uh, the show where people like Howard and Michelle Hall showed off their their work for the first time. So uh, yeah, I would say that is my proudest moment as a videographer so far. So far. Right, and I've been trying to. I'm, I'm pushing Chris a bit to get, to get. He's got a YouTube channel. It will be in the description below once we've uploaded the video. It all uploads automatically, but it takes a bit of time for StreamYard and YouTube to process it. Um, so, yeah, this footage is much better than mine. But, you know, I just do GoPro stuff, and I just want to show you the dive. But he's really into it. So, you know, he <laughs> probably takes a week to make a video when I can do it in a couple of hours. <laughs> now we've got Alex from Gowin, Critter Hunter's. Critter spotter in the room. Hi, Alex. How are you? Um, hey, Alex. His daughter, 
um, is the Scuba Apprentice on Critter Hunter's channel. So oh, between okay. Critter Hunter, myself, and Andy Walters, who's got a channel, UK Diver, we're kind of sponsoring right. that, um, to eventually, went on her 18th birthday, start a, a dive master and actually, have, if she likes it, have a career in diving as well as being a, a scuba tuber. And that's you know the yes. other interviews that I do. And I'll give a bit of a plug for next week, next Friday. I don't know the time yet. It will be on YouTube. I'm interviewing um, Tim Bradley, Platinum Course Director, who also has a YouTube channel. So that'll be Scuba Tuber Live. We'll talk to him. Right. Um, this interview is going to be really about the book and, and your experiences. I know you've done some other interviews and people really want to get into the life and all that. But just give us um, a sort of potted history of um, the experience which led you led up to you. We'll talk about what's in the book in, in detail, including the famous scuba poo incident. <laughs> um, yeah, you, you can come and be embarrassed on this show, boy. Or, you know. <laughs> Um, but just you know, um, where you're from, what your sort of family arrangements are and all of that. And you know, why did you want to write a book? So let's just get in, get that over with, and then we'll get more into the, into the book. Yeah, well, um, I was born in South Wales in a town called Aberdeer, which is about 20 minutes from Cardiff. And then I moved to Chepstow when I was 11. So I, I grew up literally just a few miles away from the... The, uh, the quarry there, which is very famous for diving now. And I started traveling in around 2003. And uh, yeah, I've been living in the Philippines now for the last nine years. Uh, married here with my wife, Beverly. And I've got a daughter called Hannah, who's seven. And my boy, Max, is uh, just turned four. Right. But, but you've got quite an interesting job, haven't you? Yeah, at the moment... I work as the international sales manager for Scandi Divers. So I travel the world and I go to many of the, the scuba trade shows around the world. And I also visit a lot of dive shops and dive businesses and clubs in the uh, UK, Australia, America, you know, all those kind of places I make visits to uh, entice them to come and dive with me in the Philippines. Yeah, and this, this is quite, we were talking about this pre-show, weren't we? You're off to the US next week in a few days' time, and yes. essentially you just get a rental car, jump in. Yeah. The people that have agreed to see you go and see, and the ones that didn't reply or didn't agree, you still go and see them as well. You just knock on yeah. their phone. Just, so just that, pop in for a courtesy call, you know. <laughs> yeah, so that, that, that must be quite interesting. We'll talk a little bit about that when we talk about the um, sequel or whatever you call it to Confessions of a Dive Master. So we've um, Alex has asked how we are. Well, we, we're pretty good today, I think. Um, yeah, very good. I've stopped diving on a Friday because it's just too busy and and I've got to concentrate on a few things. So I'm I'm back diving on Saturdays and Wednesdays now, unless I go to the ball dives, of course. We've got <laughs> um and he's here on. Yay, Chris, cheers for watching. <laughs> Thanks, Abby. You make Chris smile anyway. <laughs> Okay, so you just mentioned you, you left in 2003 to travel, which a lot of young guys do. I mean, relative, I know you've just turned 40, uh, but I've I'm, I've turned 60, so you're, as far as I'm concerned, you're still a young guy. Um, <laughs> so I get the travel thing. You went off on the first time, and then you went back, earned some money, went again. But what was the, moti the motivation to travel and leave the UK indefinitely? Well, my first real big trip was to spend a year backpacking around Australia. So uh, like many people, you know, we have a, a working visa arrangement with Australia. So I got one of them for a year and then did a few stops on the way in, in US, Hawaii, and a few weeks in New Zealand as well before arriving in Australia. And then I started to dive there. So that really started off the diving and really the, the passion to travel comes from the the hatred of the British weather. Basically, that's the really reason why I wanted to to live in warmer climate. All right. So uh, what would you say? We, we've got to be careful what we say online nowadays, haven't we? <laughs> yeah. So I, I had something to say, but I couldn't say it. So you, you're, just a, you're just a bit of a soft was, really, then. Yeah, the yeah. Good at drinking. Yeah, the weather. 
Uh, yes. Yeah, all the right, weather really gets me down. Earlier, and I want to, because I've, I've read the book, of course, I mean, um, but you did your try dive on the Great Barrier Reef, and I mm -hmm. believe you paid for it for just by handing out flyers for the guy. How did you talk your way into that deal? And can you give us some tips on how to get free barrier <laughs> reef diving for giving out some flyers? Yeah, I was, I just arrived in Cairns and I was just literally walking around the streets in an evening and I just started to see the, you know, the big posters for the trips to the barrier reef and everything like that. And then uh, I got chatting to one of the guys in the shop and then he said, yeah, well, if you, if you want to go and check out the reef, how about, you know, you just work for me two nights an evening for, uh, sorry, two hours an evening for three nights. And then uh, I'll give you a free trip to go there. So I was like, yeah, sure. No, that's a great deal. So I gave yeah. out the flyers for them nights and then, yeah, good to his word. And he took me on the reef the, the next day. So a pretty cool deal. So I, might, I may have just missed that because I was just reading the comment from Queen, um, Queenie. She's saying, yes, amen, <laughs> Lynn and Opie. So d did he approach you or did you approach him? Actually, he, he approached me more than anything. You know, I was just discussing with him the prices and everything for the day After trips. He got into the dive shop and he sort of clocked you yeah, for being yeah. a, tight, a tight Welshman. And yeah, yeah. So he's probably not going <laughs> to, he's just probably just checking the prices, looking for the cheapest deal. I better just yeah, hook him. He, yeah. Yeah. You could see I was wearing very cheap clothes, you know, so you could tell I was, you know, on, on a budget. Pack of poverty right. line. <laughs> so, I mean, then after the try dive, why didn't you sign up for a open water course there and then? To be honest, I would say the main reason was a bar called the Wool Shed, which was the place to be. You know, if you were a backpacker in Cairns, I do believe the place is still open now, but it's a crazy, like a small nightclub kind of place. You know, it was full of people every night. And I just was drinking so much and having a good time that I didn't really. You know, it didn't really come into my mind to become certified at that time. I was too busy partying, Enjoying basically, life. to, uh, to do that. Yeah to, yeah, to really sign up for the course. All right. So, yeah. So it was a few months later. I think you were further down south in New South Wales. Yeah. Um, when you actually became so, so what? What? Why did you be, decide to become certified then? You're still traveling. You're still on your year out. You're still drinking copious amounts of VB and Bundaberg rum. Yes, I've been to Australia. I know what they drink. <laughs> so why, why do you say I get, why don't you just do some more try dives? Well, I did actually, I did three more try dives uh, around the Whitsunday Islands. So I stopped there and did a, a four night sailing trip. And I didn't realize it at the time, but the boat had a compressor and there was an English dive instructor on there from Oldham actually near Manchester. And, uh, yeah, we did a few more dives during the trip, and it was really great, you know. It, now, did you pay uh, for anything, them, or did you wangle a deal? Uh, yeah, I, I paid for them, yeah. I, I actually paid for these dives, yeah. So, um, yeah, I did three beautiful dives in the Sundays, and it, actually, to be honest, the reef was much, much better than Cairns, to be honest. You know, it's really much more healthy. Not so many day boats were going to the reefs there, so it's really, uh, really pristine stuff. And then after that, again, you know, I probably could have got certified on that boat, maybe, but didn't happen for whatever reason. And then I went down to uh, Coffs Harbour in New South Wales. Again, I didn't plan to stop there, but uh, it was a long trip from near Brisbane right down to Sydney. So I broke it up with a one night stay in Coffs Harbour and I was walking around the streets. And then there was a dive shop there called Dive <laughs> and the sign outside said the cheapest place to do your open water course in Australia. And as so, a Welshman, you yeah, as a Welshman, as a cheap Welshman, I thought, okay, maybe that's a sign to uh, finally get the, <laughs> the cert, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, I finally got it done there in uh, in Coffs Harbour. Now, just while we're gone, we're having banter about being Welsh and tight. Yeah, I'm, I'm entitled to do that. My grandfather is, but the rest of you are not allowed to do that nowadays. But we <laughs> can, right? We can take. It's okay. Take yeah. the I wouldn't have used that word in the past. I'd use one beginning with P. Um, <laughs> you can bring on the folks. Answer. But in general, you know, the Welsh's reputation for tightness is very well earned. <laughs> I wasn't going to say not, but they are when it comes to drinking and buying their round. They're a bit like the Scots; they always dip in. We love a bargain. Um, so, so you went in and you actually did you negotiate or did you just accept the lowest price? 
I, I just accept the price because it already said it was the cheapest price in Australia, so I, I didn't try to um, to barter him down anything. <laughs> so, um, then what, is that when you got the bug, or was it just sort of, right? I'm certified now. When I travel, I can dive, or you know, what triggered the bug? Because... Yeah, I would say, you know, it was again, it was a a totally different uh, type of diving, really in Coffs Harbour because, again, due to my lack of knowledge on the area, you know, I've been in beautiful dives, you know, wearing a shorts and a rash guard pretty much in Cairns and, and the Sundays, And then we got to Coffs Harbour and then when they were giving us the equipment at the start, they gave me five millimetre gloves and they gave me a five millimetre hood, and, you know, and a five mil wetsuit. And I was like, well, I didn't remember wearing this stuff, you know, it, just up the coast there, you know, in the Sundays, And then it turned out, that the uh, the water temperature was much much lower than uh, than the Barry Reef as well, and, and the Barry Reef actually ended about two hundred miles north of me, so I wasn't actually even diving on the Barrier Reef anymore either. So we were actually, you know, in more like kind of uh, not beautiful warm water corals. It was more like kind of almost California type style of diving, you know, with more algae, you know, and not so not so beautiful colorful reefs as I had seen before. So it was a quite a big culture shock, you know, to to find out that during the course. So but was that when you got the bug? I uh, yeah, I mean to be honest, I really you could say I got the bug in with Sundays, but I just um you know, it took me a bit of time to to really get into it. I was still in was travel mode, in the you know. Kid, right? Yeah, yeah, it was basically yeah, it was pretty much just a one big party, you know, down the down the east coast of Australia. So I wasn't really thinking about diving that much to be honest until much later on in the trip so that was actually good training for your future career as a dive master and dive instructor all that drinking i guess oh yeah yeah it comes as part of the territory yeah <laughs> <laughs> right we've got critter hunter in the room what's going on in here i made it yeah i was chatting i'm trying trying to talk to critter hunter about some other stuff today but he's been in and out of his his house. Hey, Crit. Hey, Justin. How you doing? Thanks for joining us. Hey, Justin. How you doing, man? Oh, he's he's going to take the piss out of us. Oops, I shouldn't have said that. He's going to take the mick out of us. Um, I'm yeah, sure. He always asks some some questions. You know, which are they really relevant? No, but they're funny. <laughs> <laughs> right. So after you, here he goes. He's prepared. He's thinking now. Look at this. Hey, hey. Yeah. Stand by. Um. So after that big Australia trip, you. You've done quite a few dives, it sounds like. You're open water certified. Um, and then you um, go to the UK where you don't like the weather, where you don't like the cold, and you decide, well, I'll go diving. And then yes, you didn't want to get – you probably got hold of some second hand or given a wet uh, dry suit, which is a one of the cost of repairing this is I'm not going to pay for. And for those yeah. that could have to join the other Welsh, of which I'm – Welsh ancestry, but I am a proud Englishman. Um, I'll probably get slagged online for that. Um, <laughs> I've got a reputation for being tight. Well, they're not that tight, but um, it can be a bit extreme, especially when you decide not to go in a, a dry suit. You'll just dive in a wetsuit. So, I mean, how did you, did you enjoy that? I mean, I enjoyed my diving in the UK. And I, when I finally retire, I'll probably dive in the UK. I, I really like it. But how did you find the UK diving? Yeah, I I didn't do that much diving. I went to places like Swanage Pier and uh, Porth Keris. Yeah, Porth Keris in Cornwall. Uh, also down to St. David's in, in West Wales down there. So yeah. those were the kind of places I went to. I, I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was it was good fun, especially the the kelp forests were very nice in Cornwall. I managed to see a basking shark down there as well, actually, which is very nice. Yeah, well, there's a lot so, around. Um, moment, if you're following the press, there's a, a huge amount. Yeah, of yeah. Shark. Yeah, yeah so, they're really yeah, beautiful. I, I like Swanage and Cornwall. I'll never go to Anglesey yeah. again. You know, I, I know I need glasses, <laughs> you know, but down there I need radar or something. You know, I remember yeah. going down one line on some wreck and getting down to the bottom and then nearly putting my hand into a conger eel. It was like that. <laughs> It was like, what the F are you doing here? And I'm, yeah, well, that'll I'm... wake you up. <laughs> right, we've got a few more comments coming in here now. Here he goes. The red of your shirt really brings out <laughs> your eyes. 
I'm wearing this Welsh rugby shirt out of respect to Chris, right? Because he's a proud Welshman. So, you know, I got bought this by my brother-in-law one Christmas because he decided I should be supporting Wales instead of England because he supports England, I guess. He just wanted, a, in the family, someone supporting another team so we could have a bit of rivalry when they were both playing. But it didn't work because I still support England. But Wales is now my number two team. It used to be the All Blacks. Um, but I did sort of accept the shirt in that in that regard. Yeah. Here he goes. Here he goes. Makes you look like Santa. Well, you're not my Christmas list this year. <laughs> but, um, you were. You've just lost it. That's a lovely lady now. Um, I call her Rebecca's QB, but she's Rubik's QB. Great little blogger in the Philippines. She does a lot of live streams. She's really up. I enjoy it. And she's a big supporter of my channel. Hi, Rubik's QB. Good to see you there. She's good mates with Crit Hunter as well. And Crit Hunter now he starts to take over. Hi, QB. Here we go. Yeah, hi there, QB. I was thinking that people like Skibber just haven't been anywhere else. You see, he just can't help himself. <laughs> Crit Hunter. <laughs> Don't lock in until you try it. You, once the um, pandemic's over, you could travel is to go and film crabs in the UK. Oh, okay. <laughs> or are they <laughs> lying? You know, I'm sure. And, and Andy Waters of the YouTube channel UK Diving is actually diving today, so he can't join the live stream. But I'm sure he will um, take Critter Hunter up, up on this. And Rubik's Cube. Hey, thank you, Sir Brian. And she's saying <laughs> hello. Sir Hi. Chris. Thanks for Thanks joining for us. Comment. Ask questions, comment as we go along. We, we, yeah, we're not we're not that bothered. We'll just put them all up. So, right, you've done some diving in the UK, um, which I think is amazing in a wetsuit for someone who, who, who's a, a cold weather wuss. That's the word I'll use, a cold weather wuss. Here we go. Yeah. Back. He'll take over the show. And what's he say there? Are all the crabs in the UK... Caught above water. Ha, 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 ha. Well, come and find out. Um, I'm sure um, if you come to Wales, Chris will recommend some places where you can get some above water grabs. We're probably going to get slandered by or slated by YouTube for all Cardiff this. Cardiff Docks. Cardiff Docks. There you go. Crabs. <laughs> so the challenge is modified. You have to catch above water and below water crabs in Cardiff Docks. And just to make you suffer, you have to attend the Bluebirds, which is Cardiff City's. Uh, football team or soccer team, as as is said in the country that doesn't really speak English, um, <laughs> which is Chris's other passion beside diving. So you have to go and watch one of them, one of those matches in the rain at below 10 degrees C. Right. Stop taking over the, the channel, Chris Hunter. There he goes. <laughs> Challenge accepted. So he's a good egg. Uh, so let's go back. Um, so once you'd saved some cash, you were off again. And this time you decided South and Central America, ending up in Nutilla in Honduras, which is one of the Bay Islands, which I, yeah. I understand, I've never been there, is one of the iconic dive master training hotspots. Can you take us through the travels which preceded your arrival in Nutilla and why did you make the decision firstly to become a dive master and then stay on and become a scuba diving instructor? Well, it actually started when a, a good friend of mine called Steve, who uh, we traveled through Amer Australia together and also from Southeast Asia. And he also got me a job in Austria as well, where I worked as a pizzeria chef for a couple of months. After that, it was a few weeks, and he actually went on the TV show Deal or No Deal with Noel Edmonds. And uh, he won £25,000 on the show so wow. if he had played to the end he would have won a hundred thousand pound but he pulled out a little bit early and anyway 25 grand is pretty good anyway right so uh we both had money saved up so we said okay it's time for another trip and then we just said okay how about south and central america you know again me and steve didn't really plan anything wherever we did anything we did it off the cuff got us in trouble many times but we said okay let's go so we just booked flights to rio and then after that uh, we traveled through Brazil a little bit around Argentina and then we started going north up to the Amazon River and then we did a five day trip through the Amazon and then ended up in uh, Venezuela for a while, then into Colombia and then 
we sailed from Colombia to Panama through the San Blas Islands with a sailboat for, uh, I think it was like four or five days or something like that. And then once we finally got to Panama, Steve decided he wanted to go back to the UK. And I decided from that moment, as soon as I, as soon as Steve went, I basically traveled up by bus in two days through, you know, Panama, Costa Rica, Guatemala, Honduras, you know, straight all the way through on a bus. It really hard, hard, you know, your bus looks uh, hard at the end of it. Experience, I guess, that yeah, one. yeah. Yeah, and so that's when I finally, and actually, to be honest, I wasn't planning on going to Utila at the start. My plan was to go to Roatan because, you know, I was going by the Lonely Planet guidebook and they were saying, oh, it's a lot bigger than Utila and everything. So I was actually planning to go there. But uh, in the ferry terminal in La Ceiba, which is the port town to service the Bay Islands, I got talking to this girl and she said to me, don't go to Roatan, go to Utila. You'll and thank me again, you know. So I, I took her advice and I jumped on the ferry to Utila instead of Roatan. And, you know, possibly that was the best bit of advice I'd ever got in my life, to be honest, you know, from this uh, this girl who I didn't even know her name, you know. So I went to Utila and it was a really uh, smart move. All right. So did you go to Utila and, or, Ro, or the plan Rot Rotan or Utila actually to do more diving? Or was there another? Yes, yeah, I, I did plan to become a dive master. By that time, in my mind, I really wanted to do it. So it was something that I planned. I did, I wasn't sure if I was going to stay there and work though, but I wanted to do a dive master course. But I still had a flight booked from Chile to New Zealand. And I had a two year work visa for New Zealand, which I was going to use. But after I did the dive master course, I decided to, to stay around a little bit longer. All right, well, we'll get into that in a minute. Let's just go through some more comments. Mm -hmm. Um, Red Hunter, he's done it. The, he's done it in the reverse. I guess he jumped on the bus because mm -hmm. he's never got any money. So Mexico to Rio. <laughs> That's what he tells me. He's a successful YouTuber. He's never got any coin, you know. Um, <laughs> and you end up. <laughs> Thanks, Ruby. <laughs> she's, she's giving Red Hunter <laughs> some stick. That's what I like. She's my ally. Thanks. And. People that go to the Philippines on their way to Thailand and, and, and got lost, right? I like I like the Philippines. I like the people. I like the. the, the I'm not a huge fan of, of, of Thailand. I like the food in Thailand, but as a place to visit yeah. and free and easy with nice people, Philippines. I think everyone will agree wins hands down. So there you yeah, go. Right, let's get into Utila because you know, as a young man, I was keen into diving. I became. Hold on, this is Wolf. Um, you won't see him, but when my hand starts moving around like this, my dog wants some attention because otherwise <laughs> I'll just sit outside the room and um, scratch, or not scratch, he'll headbutt the door. You know, oh, there okay. we go. <laughs> Let's get into Utila because, you know, as a young guy, I had to make a decision. Do I go full-time into diving? I own a string of diving. I mean, if you're looking on, on, about me on, on the channel, I'll tell you. So I was heavily involved part-time in diving, owning businesses, teaching at the weekend. And in many ways, it's, uh, it was a driver for my YouTube channel because I kind of regret. But, you know, in the 80s, jobs were hard to find. You know, your parents always said, look, get a good job. And anyway, the past is dead. Illa fat mat, as Arab says, which means the past is dead. You can't change it. So I'm really interested about Utila because it's a small island, isn't it? Eight, four kilometers wide, 11 kilometers long. It's the smallest yeah. of the Bay Islands in Honduras. Is it really the dive master party capital of the world? And what draws people there for dive master training? Yeah, I would call it uh, the Ibiza of the, the dive training world, to be honest. You know, it is, well, when I was there anyway, every night was like Saturday night. You know, there wasn't any quiet times. There was, every bar was packed full of people. There was beach parties. There was parties in the jungle. You know, there was loads of stuff going on all the time. So it was really, uh, yeah, it was easy to get sucked into the uh, the rum world for sure when you're there. All right, so when you're training. young, you're into diving, especially in the US or whatever, you're going to go to Utila. Yes, I would definitely recommend going there. To be honest, I'm not sure. I mean, this was quite a few years ago now. I haven't actually, to be honest, I haven't been back to Utila since I left there. Um, but some of my friends have returned and they say it's a little bit more commercialized now. 
you know, maybe the yeah, same as the full moon party. The world moves on, that happens, right? That, that, yeah, you know, yeah, that, yeah. You know, I'm, I've been all over the world as a young man and stuff. And yeah, I remember going back to, I went to work in Saudi Arabia in the late 70s, early 80s. And then I went back to Riyadh. You know, 20 years later, yeah. I don't have a clue even where I was in the city for the whole three days I was there, right? So, yeah, yeah progress. And a lot of people live in the past. For me, that's just the way it is, you know. Let's have a yeah. look what's going on here. Um, Crit Hunter's back up. Kevin is his cat. Kevin would absolutely be the boss of Wolf. <laughs> yeah, I, that wouldn't surprise me. It, no. The biggest problem I have with this dog is cats. He absolutely hates them. Uh, but I got him as a rescue. He's three years old. Belgian Malinois, right? So, you know, a police military dog. And he's got scratches oh, wow. on his nose. So I think that's why he hates cats, because they've given him short rift. <laughs> so you, you did your dive master course in Utila, but you stayed yep. on. So I guess you've just answered part of that question, is you enjoyed the party. And you worked as a yeah. dive master. And then you did your IDC there and became mm -hmm. an instructor. Why did you do yeah. the IDC there and not someplace else? I mean, yeah, two year work visa for New Zealand. Yeah, I had to actually, to be honest, the, that ship sailed. Once I started working as a dive master, the, uh, the flights actually ran out of uh, validity. So I just ripped up the tickets anyway. Uh, but the reason why I stayed there was really the people I was working with. You know, the dive shop was had quite a few Brits there. You know, we used to get on really, really well. A couple of Americans and a guy from Belgium. So we were like a little family, really. So yeah, I read it was that kind of hard. It was a very yeah, tight yeah, it was thing, it? very tight. Yeah. So you know, we were having so much fun that we didn't really think about leaving. You know, a lot of us stayed for a long time. Slowly but surely, we started to, you know, to go to to pastures pastures new after a while. But I didn't really think about even going anywhere else at that time. You know, I was having, I was having so much fun. You know, I was seeing whale sharks all the time, dolphins, pilot whales. You know, for me, it was the best. At the time, it was the best diving in the world. So I didn't feel like I had to go anywhere else. How old were you when you went to Utila? I was 27. All right. So, yeah. So you're supposed to start developing a good head on your shoulders by about that age, but you were a late bloomer, it looks like. Yeah, I think it was more like 37 with me, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> so what was the drive to become an instructor? Was it you had a passion to be an instructor or you could just make more money? Yeah, I. of course, when you're doing a dive master course, you assist right on, on some courses. So it was nice to see that. And, you know, you think then, oh, yeah, I could also do that. And, uh, yeah, it's great feeling to train people but on the other side of it i really wanted to become an experienced dive master before jumping straight into being an instructor yeah, i think you did a thousand so, dives didn't you before? yeah 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 i locked a thousand dives before i even became an instructor so that was in the back of my mind because a lot of people you know in utila some people would go there as an open water diver you know and literally go to open water course right the way through to instructor they call that know, zero so I, hero, yeah. Yeah. So I, yeah, zero to hero, yeah. So I, I didn't really want to do that. So I, I wanted to really gain experience as a dive master first. And then as it happened, uh, one of the instructors left at the shop and there was an IDC coming up and the manager said to me, Chris, if you want, you know, you can do your IDC now and go straight into being an instructor here with us. So it was uh, just waiting for the door to open, I guess, at the right time. Well, did they sponsor you on that or did you have to? Oh, no, I, I paid for all of it. Yeah, Sorry? Yeah, I paid all of it. Yeah, I paid all. No discount. <laughs> yeah, but you say in the book it paid off pretty quickly, so it was a good decision, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it paid off pretty quick. Yeah, it didn't only took, I think, two or three months to uh, get the money back, you know, from commissions and everything. So, uh, and you were yeah, it was about an excellent your, investment. Your first tip, wasn't you, when you got a $50 tip or something? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was totally shocking, you know. I didn't, because most of the time at the beginning I was diving with backpackers, you know, so they're budget travelers, you know, they're, they might give you a drink maybe at the bar, but that'll be it. But, um, yeah, I was diving with a, a Honduran guy that lived in the U.S. And uh, we dived together for, I think, four or five days. And at the end of it, he gave me $50, you know, which was a lot of money because I was only getting paid $10 for a shift, basically, as a, a dive master, you know. So that was uh, huge money and also made me think a little bit then, oh, actually, you know, maybe 
maybe I can make more money out of this and make uh, make a real job out of it as well. All right. So did, how many bottles of rum would that buy? It's pretty Just cheap in Honduras. I mean, you could probably get 10 bottles for that, I reckon. <laughs> and back it, back back when you did your IDC in you tell what can you remember what the cost was? I think it was about two thousand pounds, uh, two thousand dollars. Sorry, back then, yeah, it wasn't. Well, it really it's much more expensive now. It's about the same price. Yeah, now, yeah, yeah. I think it's a bit more expensive now. I think the cost of the materials has gone up a lot as well since I did oh, it. Oh, yeah, that, that's a big criticism I, I, I hear from paddy trucks just because I'm BSA yeah. now. Um, one of the drivers with not renewing with paddies because I'd lapsed for a few years, but I was still an active instructor. Um, but they weren't right. entertaining it. They wanted me to do the full thing again. And I, I'm i not going to go full-time into dive instruction. So with my BSAC instructor uh, qualification, I could cross over to SSI. And yes. I bought some advanced open um, water courses for one of my friends. Um, and the cost was ridiculously low compared to what Paddy would have charged. Um, and yeah. I think a lot... I, I think I know in the Philippines, SSI is actually... I shouldn't talk about this now because it's off subject, but it is something close to my heart. Is um, because Paddy used to be a really good organisation, it and it was actually set up as a non non profit organisation, believe it or not, and it kind of mm. took over the LA County scuba qualification. Right. So you know, I've been involved. I've certified with Paddy in the mid eighties, so it's a bit of a, a shock to the system to see him go so expensive. Um, yeah, because yeah. Because they've got to live, right? They've got to make some money. That's um, right. right. Let's what Cridant is up to. You see, I got bored in Utila and went over to Nicaragua and <laughs> Horn Islands. So we obviously didn't drink enough, you know? Yeah. Um, it's about, okay, so yeah, not, I, yeah, I do see 3K, but still not yeah. huge. Yeah, I think it's about that now, yeah, about 3K. Right. Because of the materials and stuff and what. Right, so... We know you like to party, or you used to. I know you you settled down a bit now. Yeah, a bit more calm um, these days. And you till a bit. You've confirmed was one the the Ibiza, the diving Ibiza <laughs> of the world. So, are you yeah. going to share with us any of the really crazy stuff you got up to that may not be, may or may be in the book, and you may embellish it a bit more? Um, you know, uh, you don't have to you know, be married. There was. On this one. <laughs> Yeah, there were so many nights, you know, where you, you can't even remember what happens to you, you know. So, but there was one night it was quite funny because a, a lot of the bars they're right on the the edge of the water, right? So, most of the toilets they just basically go straight into the sea. So, um, you have to go around the side of the bars to use the toilet. So I walked around in the pitch black, and I didn't realize it, but they moved some planks of wood from the dock, and of course. I just kept walking and just went straight into the water, you know, right next to the toilet. So covered in God knows what, you know, it was quite deep. So I actually got totally submerged in the water. I had my phone in my pocket. So that was uh, toast. Yes. And I <laughs> trying to scramble out of the water, you know, climbing up the side of the dock. And I, there, there was now, this guy. Telling me everything from the toilets went direct into the sea. <laughs> Oh uh, yeah, really? Yeah, that's what it was like back then. I don't know if it's still the same now, but uh, you know, everything went into the sea there. So, and it was funny because it was actually right next to one of the dive shops there. So, if you're doing confined water training there, <laughs> you know, you literally it could be a low vis around day. in I didn't people's want to business. Come and have a curry last night, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, and then I climbed up the side of the dock, and there was a guy just sat there in the dark by himself, and he looked at me. And he said, dude, that's one of the funniest things I've seen in my life. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that would have been a great oh, yeah. YouTube video. We would have got a million hits for that one. Yeah, yeah. And what so did you smell like? Uh, to be honest, I, I just I just went straight to my house. And I got showered and changed and went straight back to the bar. You know, washed all everything off. And then oh. went straight back out again. So uh, it took a lot to, uh, to a lot to stay in those days, that's for sure. All right, so let's get to a bit more sort of boring, serious. I understand from the book you were or still are an ordained minister. Can you let us know yeah. how that happened and how did you manage to pull that one off? You know, that's nearly <laughs> as good as getting the free dry, dry dive in the Barrier Reef. Yeah. Um, we had the – there was a couple from 
uh, Germany and America who were running the resort that I worked at for a while. And they were keen to get married while they were there. And uh, they asked, they wanted someone to do the, the ceremony on the boat. So they thought I was the guy to do it. And they asked me. And then one of my other friends joked, oh, you know, you can become ordained online these days if you really want to do it. So the guy gave me the the web address and I went on there and I, I applied to be a, a minister online from the something like the Ministry of Life or something like that. It was a long time ago now. So, yeah, I became they sent me a certificate and everything, you know, to my email and I, I became ordained <laughs> and I, I married uh, the couple there on the boat in Utila, which is really nice. You know, we waited until sunset and took the dive boat down onto one of the dive sites there. And we did the service, you know, beautiful, uh, beautiful location. I forgot to turn my phone off in my pocket. So just as we were about to start, my phone started ringing in my pocket. So uh, that was a pretty unprofessional thing to do, you know, for a, for an ordained priest. All so, right. uh, yeah, it was a really beautiful day and glad to be part of it. All right, so um, so you didn't sort of have the urge, because you know, I've, I've spent a lot of time in Nigeria visiting, where um, they've got these huge churches which make a lot of money, and in America, of course, they've got these big profit-making churches. So you're not, we're not going to see, um, you know, Chris's evangelical church of the Philippines <laughs> and then Nigeria, are we? with a congregation of yeah. fifty thousand paying you a dollar each a week. Yeah. <laughs> now that would be nice. <laughs> right so um how many couples did you actually marry was that it or did you do more and why are you still I actually a member of the clergy so to speak yeah i did two more weddings after that i had the uh, the pleasure of marrying two of my best friends from wales in uh, Koh Samui in thailand uh, that was a really beautiful trip you know we spent uh, a week together there all of my friends came over from wales so it was probably the last time we were all very close and together before everyone started having kids. So that was a really beautiful trip. Um, yeah, so that I was... they were taking the mickey out of you. <laughs> yeah, everyone teases me a little bit. And then uh, there was one more couple, uh, Rob and Anna. Uh, Rob is a really good friend of mine who we met in, in Honduras. So we've been friends for uh, for a long time and... and they had a service in the uh, Gili Air in, in Indonesia four years ago. So I also did that one as well for them. So that's uh, three couples. And, uh, yeah, they're all still together. You know, all they're right. all still together. Right. So that's good news. For the, for the viewers, if you want a long-lasting marriage, get Chris <laughs> here, the vicar, a.k.a. the scuba diving vicar, to marry you. You can do it underwater as well. And you'll probably have a good chance of staying together. His fees yes. are very reasonable. Just contact me. I'm his agent. <laughs> and we'll put something together for you. So Chris Hunter <laughs> thinks if he attended church, it'd catch fire. Um, they'll probably throw you out. Rubik's Cube. Is Sharp really not eating people? And if really wearing diving suit, just curious. So she wants to know, is a shark attacking the suit or the person? Any thoughts? Um, I just I think if the shark is hungry, suit or no suit, he might uh, he might want to taste you. You know, if he's hungry. Now let, let's so get we'll this one. Out. The, the biggest predator in the ocean, right, is man. That's true. Not sharks. There's hardly any sharks left. So don't worry about sharks. You'll be seeing a lot of footage coming up. You I mean, you've seen me diving with tiger sharks on one of my videos called OMG, I got kissed by a tiger shark. Um, did my um, rear end twi Twitter a little bit? Yes, it did, but he wasn't interested in me. Um, and that's supposed to be next to the great white. I've recently seen some footage of someone snorkeling with great whites in South Africa. Um, wow. when it's been feasting on a whale. And the guy's strategy was, I'll just get on the big, follow the biggest great white, hold on to its fin, and everyone else will get out of the way. And I thought, that's suicidal, but it worked, <laughs> right? And it, it wasn't set up. It was a South African guy in his rig with his mates, um, and he didn't get bit, you know? So it's, yeah, you have more chance um, probably of getting robbed in most countries than being bit by a shark if you're a scuba diver. 
Um, I, for one, certainly have no fear of them. Um, but I did. I used to be, when I first started scuba diving, I was just like um, Rubik's Cube. I didn't like them. But that was proved wrong. Okay. Ah, so here's Cridan to one of his top tips. If it comes up. Yeah, he just says, just wear a pink suit, QB, and you'll be fine. <laughs> and she says, there's no pink Goro AAA. I don't know what Goro means, but just get some spray paint, right? Just get your kids to spray paint your pink, put the suit on, spray paint it. That'll work. Credanta, you rub it with dragon fruit. Come on, what's going on here? These two. You know, you're both married, right? So come on. <laughs> Uh, no, the shark really won't hit you. Chris was taking the mickey there. He's, he's Welsh, remember. They've got a weird sense of humour. Yeah. <laughs> Vegan sharks. Yeah, that's, that's Crit Hunter's next video. Right, let's get on. While in Utilla, you made the transition for work in dive resorts, um, which is mm -hmm. in many ways can be a very relaxed life. It can also be, if you're in, in some countries, really hard work so i'm not taking that but in a lot of resort destinations you know the diving's over quick and you're all out partying and stuff but then you went to work on liverboard which is a completely yep. different kettle of fish how was that experience and what were the challenges so you've gone from a party animal drinking every yeah. night uh, partying every night and then you're on a liverboard yeah it was a a big transition really uh it, even going from the dive shop to the resort was, you know, also a, a bit different. You know, you, you were diving with uh, groups of divers who were a bit more wealthier than backpackers as well. So, you know, you, you had to really know your stuff. And it, that's when you started diving with more of the photographers. So, you know, that was also a big change there. But, uh, yeah, going from the, the small day boats to a liverboard is really uh, a whole different game. You know, everything is, is much more difficult, you know, you go from small ropes to these thick two-inch ropes. You know, securing the boat was a lot more tricky than the day boats. We you don't to... work as a diver, do you? You actually work as an active member of crew doing watches and... Oh, yeah, them. everything. Yeah, washing dishes, serving dinner. Yeah, fixing problems in the engine room, you know, cleaning block toilets. Yeah, you're working from 6 a.m. until 9 p.m. most nights. So it's, uh, it's pretty well, full on. I guess that was the start of you... Were... Growing up as a dive instructor, right? So I'm getting a bit serious. Yeah. Cash in the bank. Yeah. Yeah, you have to, you know, with the backpackers, they don't really care about the marine life, what you saw on the dives and that kind of thing. But when you got people paying three or four thousand dollars for a trip, then you know, you need to be knowledgeable. You need to know about the marine life, you need to know about the habitat, you know. So you really have to step up to the next level, you know, with that kind of knowledge to uh, you know, to to dive with these uh, experienced divers. And that's when I guess you started to get into the videography, right? Because they eventually made yeah. you the, the, the um, what they call it, video pro or something. Yeah? Video pro, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I actually, I first started taking pictures for a while because we had to make a, a weekly slideshow for the guests. So we would take pictures of them on shipwrecks and with sharks and that. And then uh, the first mate of the ship, he was the video pro. So he would make a weekly presentation, you know, take the camera on quite a few dives and then edit everything within a week. So, uh, you know, it was a really a big challenge to learn how to edit, you know, like a 30 minute video, you know, in yeah. literally a couple of how days. How many years so, ago was that? Uh, that was in, I think, 2010 that started. Yeah. And I mean, that's yeah. what we were in 2021, so 11 years ago. You didn't yeah, have the software yeah. you've got now. Um, I mean, I can yeah. now just talk myself to edit on, on, on my phone and there'll be some videos coming out. I mean, they're not, it's not as great as someone doing it on Hit Film Express, which is what the lady who helped me use or Premiere Pro. And I, for one, have not really got any interest in editing. You know, I'm, I'm just taking yeah. people or talking about stuff. But it's a lot of work. And when I talk with Justin Critter Hunter, this is on a serious note. I mean, his biggest bugbear is the amount of editing. He gets the footage and then he's got to edit it. And it's just the time yeah. involved. Yeah, it takes a long time. Yeah, some nights, you know, you're up until one or two o'clock in the morning, you know, to get it uh, to get it all done on time because you have to have it ready 
for the, the guests last evening on, on board, right? So you can sell it to them before they leave the ship. So you've got no excuse if you have to stay uh, up until four o'clock in the morning to get it done, then you have to do that. So on my uh, recent yeah, trip to the Maldives, and I'm only using the GoPro and I'm uploading the preview using the app on my phone. So I trim the trim the, the footage and stuff. And then I put together a little um, and it's also virtually an automatic edit. You just click a button and it's put and then you can bring bits and pieces in. But it took I had no we're doing three dives a day. I did not have a minute to myself. And that's with using a really easy app. So it, you know, it really brought home yeah. to me. Um, and I think it will improve yeah, our videos in, in the future because now instead of me dumping the footage on the lady who helps me, Ria, my superstar, I'm now giving her um, stuff that's uploaded to the cloud in, in clips of six to, to 15 seconds, um, which is making her life a lot. And she hasn't got to try it. She's not a diver. So yeah. It, it become a lot smooth, but I have nothing but respect for people who do their own editing. And when I've yeah, seen you know, your videos, you see the quality of Justin's. It's really top class. Yeah. To make it easier for yourself, you know, you, you almost have to learn how to edit underwater. You know, that's really yeah. the key thing to do. If you can learn how to cut your clips, you know, while you're filming yeah, I've them. doing that because before, yeah, I, just like, I mean, if you look on my channel, I'm a big um, crit uh, critique and tester of the parallels for Kita. And yep. you know, that you know, they say four divers by divers, it wasn't by divers for divers because one of the things they sort of suggest is you jump in, it switches on automatically, and then you, you should. Well, they've obviously never edited a video in their life, you know. No, <laughs> right, let's get back on, <laughs> let's get back on, on subject right, because you know, you can go on my channel and learn about what I do. Um, so the Bay Islands, you've got to tell <laughs> us, um, about the scuba poo. And because I like seahorses, they feature on my channel, the sea, Scuba Poo Seahorse Experience. <laughs> Can you give the viewer, viewers some advice on what to do if caught short on a boat with no loo and you need a number yes. two, is the big one? Yeah. <laughs> first, of all, first advice is to take off your wetsuit before jumping in the water. <laughs> <laughs> Luckily for me, I was more of a board shorts kind of guy, so it wasn't too hard for me to to get it. But uh, you know, make sure obviously you have a little bit of privacy. You have to double check each way to make sure there's not another group of divers coming towards you, you know, from another boat. So uh, yeah, you have to make sure that uh, it's it's going to go downwind from you, you know, so uh, <laughs> yeah, <if you laughs> so it doesn't end up in the if you had a curry the night before as well. Make oh, sure you yeah. know the, the currents going. Yeah. Yeah, you're in serious trouble. If you know it's going to be that kind of one, then I would probably even recommend taking off your BCD, to be honest, you know, <laughs> and hold it in front of you. But, um, yeah, if, if you if you know if it feels like it's going to be a harder one, then, you know, you're all right. But uh, if you've been eating some some runny foods, <laughs> then I would definitely consider taking your BCD off and holding it in front of you as well. The great so, thing in the book, we did have actually an upside when you did just your, your scuba poo experience didn't you 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 you'd done it but you still looked around for something around the site right yeah yeah i didn't want to waste yeah i don't want to waste any dive time so i actually there was a a small black seahorse that was about five feet away from uh where it landed you know so uh yeah i i marked the spot and then went back to the boat you and i was diving spot, with uh, was <laughs> Yeah, with an X. Who marks what? Bloody hell. Yeah. Right, we better, we better move away. This is going the wrong way. Uh, <laughs> is going to love this. Um, just one thing on seahorses. You'll see in the description below when this is uploaded, there is a, a link to my Teespring or now called Spring account. I support the Seahorse Trust. Um, we do have um, merch where all the profit goes to them. Right, I think we've raised over $150 to date. Not great, nice. but I would, um, and we do have um, unique designs. The first one was by Critter Hunter. Once we've sold 100, they've gone, and another designer's shirt takes it up. So, just a quick shout out um, please support the Seahorse Trust. Um, it's called the seahorsetrust.org. Please go on their website. They would love anyone worldwide who sees seahorses to report them on the database on their website. It really helps them out. So we've got some comments from Critter Hunter again. 
You want to edit, edit my videos, Brian? Yeah, just send them to me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, if you want to leave subscribers, I'll do them on my phone and I can watch your channel slowly go into the into the sunset. Um, where can I get the book? There will be a link below when this video is uploaded in the description where you can buy it. It's available on Amazon, but we'll put a link in there because um, a couple of people, I believe, or a, a lady I dive with who worked for Chris in the Philippines um, had difficulty getting it. She finally got one thanks to Chris's intervention. So we'll make sure there's a ro ro robust link up there. And... Yeah, well, I'll do an interview with you, Critter Hunter, again. You were one of my guinea pigs in the early days um, when you get your book out. But um, we're going to talk more about the sequel. So yeah, the diving books seem to be popular. What else has he got up there? I tried to do this, but couldn't get my way to do it. I think so. <laughs> Oh, well, I guess, you know, on dry suits in the UK now, we've got P-valves and P-zips. I mean, that, there you are. There's an opportunity. You, the scuba poo wetsuit has a zippable flap at the back. Yeah. Um, and the, um, the internal colour, I guess, should be brown. What else have we got coming up? The emergency exit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amazon, I remember that website from before I was a Filipino. I think he's hankering <laughs> for me to buy him one and send him one. Uh, yeah, we can do that. We can swap details. Yeah, I've got answer. some copies we'll here. We'll do a deal with Chris now because Chris likes a deal. Give him a big <laughs> shout out um, to the book in one of your um, videos. And yeah, that'd be nice. Between him and me to, to get a copy. You know, he'll sell a few copies so he can give you one for free. Right, we're going to yeah, move away from good. the Bay Islands and because um, you were getting more serious now. Um, <laughs> the, the liverboards definitely cut down on the drinking, except for the day off. Now, before we leave, top yeah. five dive sites in the Bay Islands. You were on a liverboard there. Um, can I mention the name? Sure, yeah. yeah it was the Aggressive Fleet, you know, um, one of the best liverboard fleets in the world. And this young man um, got... So, yeah, he must have been pretty good at what he did, because aggress Aggressive Fleet don't take people who... Who aren't very good. So, for all that, your top five die sites in the Bay Island in Rotan, Utila. Oh, I would say uh, my favourite one. Number one is uh, Duppy Waters in uh, in Utila. That's uh, in the Turtle Harbour area. Beautiful, uh, nice sandy patches with deep wall uh, seahorses. You can find them on the sponges there. Really beautiful place. Uh, Black Hills, number two. That's a sea mount couple of miles off Utila, uh, huge schools of batfish there, nurse sharks, green moray eels, that kind of stuff. Um, third would be probably Mary's Place in Roatan. That's really a uh, fantastic uh, canyon. I can turn through a bunch of mazes. Really, really nice. Uh, number four would probably be the shark dive in Roatan. There's a place where they, they feed the sharks. Uh, you see a bunch of Caribbean reef sharks there sometimes 10 or 20 on a dive so not very often you get to see that I don't, it's not my number one dive because there's a lot of feeding going on there so i'm not a big fan of that feeding stuff and then uh number five, five. yeah fine. yeah and the last one would be little bite which is famous for for the macro life so you can find things like uh, seahorses there the short nosed batfish uh, peacock, uh, mantis shrimps, that kind of stuff. Well, it's, Cryptic, a good it's a good Oh, yeah, nominated. it's good. Yeah, Util is really good. Yeah, it's got a good uh, good mixture of, you know, don't get me wrong, the macro is not as good as it is in the Indo-Pacific, but, you know, there's still some pretty good stuff to see there if you if you look around in the, you know, in it's the, not, the it's not too time. shabby, as you say, in Wales, right? Yeah, not too shabby. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Yeah, all right. Shabby. Shabby. <laughs> I've watched nearly all his videos, so I'll let you know when he's done it. Then we can arrange to get yeah. him a copy of the book. Yeah, sure. Um, Gary Kulisic, Chris, you will be king. Love you, bruv. <laughs> Gary, welcome to the show. I don't know where you are, who you are, but Chris obviously knows you. Yeah, Gary is uh, Captain Gary, very good guy, one of the. You should actually arrange an interview with him. He's a very interesting guy as well. Really, uh, boat captain for many years, worked on ships all over the place. 
Yeah, I'll, I'll, salty I'll, tales I'll, with me. I'd be up for that if you're up for it. So um, just just let us know in the comments or, or let Chris know. Um, on my YouTube channel, you usually find my um, email address in the description of each video. Uh, I do miss a couple every now and again, but it is it is it is in there, and it's also in the about me section. So, yeah, I'm you know, quite willing to interview virtually anyone really who's involved in scuba diving. <laughs> got a good story to say. Yeah, you know, I'm not desperate, but you know, I want to deliver good stories about scuba diving and experiences to people. Yes, right. Crit hunters back. I told you to take over. Don't peeps go to Honduras for whale sharks? Yes, do they? They do. Yeah. Yep. Uh, yeah. Utila or somewhere else? Uh, yes, yeah, it's, it's actually closest to Utila. There's a, a migration route that goes up into the Gulf of Mexico, so it's seasonal. Usually uh, around March, April time, you see them on the way up, and then September, October time, you see them on the way back down. Usually, so uh, yeah, I saw. So many whale sharks there, you know, really uh, beautiful experiences out there. Yeah, they all, yeah, they're out in the deep blue water. You know, it's not, there's no feed in them or anything like that. It's all 100% natural. So, uh, yeah, beautiful place for whale sharks. Right, it's just in the, the negotiator, AK. Oh, but I need to read the book first. All right, we'll talk <laughs> some of that. All yeah. right. Blooming, blooming. Right, yeah. Justin, I'll, I'll send you a copy via LBC. No problem. There you go. So <laughs> better be a good review. He needs to sell about a million of them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right, so nice. to, you know, you decided to stay on liverboards and you eventually yep. made the decision to leave the Bay Islands. I'm calling it the Bay Islands now because the aggressor mm -hmm. doesn't just do utility, does Roatan and, and goes round. And then you went to the Maldives. You went to work liverboards in the in the Maldives. How yep. did that come about? You know, from bars on every corner, as I say, to one bar at the airport hotel. Yes, yeah, it was yeah, huge culture shock. Um, after four years in in Utila, I was ready for the for the next challenge. So was it sort I of liver, liver recovery was it? Or? Yes, it was definitely one of those liver recovery program needed somewhere to dry out for for a couple of years. <laughs> so I guess at this stage you're really getting serious um, about being a scuba diving professional and actually making some some coin out of it right making some cash yeah 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 so that i mean that's i guess what um but at this stage were you saying right i want i, I want to do liverboards I'm, I'm not too bothered about resorts anymore or was it just the opportunity was there i mean how did you get the job in oh was that on an aggressor as well was it a transfer yeah that or? was on the, that was on the original maldives aggressor um uh, basically there's usually an opportunity to move around the fleet within the boat. So you, you just contact the head office and then ask him if there's any positions available, you know, anywhere in the world, basically you would, you would consider. So yeah, it took a couple of weeks, but um, yeah, an offer came through from the Maldives and they were looking for a boat manager. You know, I wasn't really experienced as a boat manager, you know, so, you know, it was quite a step up for me as well. So, but the salary was really good. There were some good benefits. You know, they would pay for flights home once a year, all that kind of stuff, and pay for your work permit and that kind of thing. So it was uh, it was a no-brainer, really, to go there. And I guess it's called uh, probably, yeah, I mean, we, we talked earlier on about you were a bit of a pisshead and that, but it's probably kind of a validation for you that you'd actually would, were developing as, as a young man and becoming a career professional, so to speak. And also, I mean, because aggressive fleet standards are very demanding. I've been on them. I used to represent them years and years ago, as we as we discussed. Yep. So, mm -hmm. I mean, they wouldn't have given you the job if they thought you couldn't do it, right? Yeah, I think they they needed a sensible head on board, basically, because um, the the captains, but well, the, the the manager stroke captains before me, they they lasted six and four months, respectively. You know, so they couldn't get anyone to stay there because there was a lot of challenges there. So I guess it's just, well, let's just chuck him in there. Maybe he'll stick. I don't know, you know, but uh, yeah, <laughs> no, let's just get someone there. Please just get someone there now if we need some help. Yeah, nothing, doesn't, so, uh, nothing, nothing doesn't stick to him. We've heard about the scuba, the scuba poo experience. <laughs> Not scuba poo, scuba poo. poo. <laughs> <laughs> Gary's, I like Gary's Facebook. Thanks for that. Um, appreciate that. <laughs> um, back, I told you. The, do you have a YouTube channel? I have an amazing business idea. 
we start YouTube where Brian will read the book and make it into an audio book. We will call the channel Grumpy Brian Storytime. Yeah, brilliant. But the audio book's <laughs> nearly finished. So once again, <laughs> Hunter, you're late. Yes, I am famous for being a bit grumpy. But I am 60, <laughs> I'm a grumpy old BSAC diver, you know. Right, so let's back to back to the book. Um, from reading the book, do I get the impression that you found the Maldives, while well, being a, a diving paradise, and I go there a lot when I can, mm -hmm. was it too restrictive for you? Did you enjoy your time in the Maldives? You know, I really, I enjoyed the diving side of it, and I, I enjoyed um, the boat to it. The boat was really beautiful. You know, the vessel was fantastic. A motor sailor, you know, when she had the sails up, she was really, really beautiful. But it's a challenging place to work. You know, logistics are a nightmare. It's hard to get anything done. You know, it's so it, from that side of it, it was always something going on on, on the side, you know, which uh, sometimes blew over into the charter, sometimes where we had like pretty serious mechanical issues a few times and it was things breaking down that wasn't well maintained. So I didn't enjoy that side of it, but so the diving was stress, absolutely yeah. superb. Yeah, it was quite a lot of stress, you know, from, from that side of it. Things I couldn't really control because, you know, we had the captain and the engineer but they didn't know what they were doing half the time. So, you know, it was, um, it was kind of tough because the boat was owned by an Italian consortium. So if ever there was problems, we had to contact them in Italy and then try and get parts sent over. You know, we didn't really keep a lot of spare parts either on board. So sometimes things broke and we yeah. just had to wait weeks and weeks for it to get fixed, you know. So, so then you, uh, you're, the, back you're the front line, aren't you? You're the boat manager. So the, the, the people Yeah, complain. yeah. So, you know, they're all complaining at me, basically, when I'm trying to, you know, make things work. But, uh, yeah, unfortunately, I was I was the one, the last line defense sort of thing, and I would be getting a lot of the stick from the guests if things were breaking down. So that side of it was frustrating. I, I did learn a lot. Don't get me wrong. You know, it was really a, a fast learning curve. And it was a million miles away from the operation of the, the boat in Honduras. You know, we only had six crew and we did everything on board and it run well. I had 15 crew in the Maldives and sometimes things we didn't seem to have enough men sometimes, <laughs> you know. So, uh, yeah, it was really a, a totally tough, different tough world, assignment. you know, than yeah, tough assignment. Yeah. But, you know, I did it for nearly two years. So I think that was um, pretty yeah. good, you know, to stay that long, to be honest, for all yeah, the challenges. Yeah. yeah. Right, let's, let's, we're going to top dive sites in the world because I'm just working on a, a load of videos, and I'm just I've just done one, my top um, five dives from the last trip. But what's he up to now? I think I just negotiated a free book, also for Brian to read it to me. Yeah, I'm good at bedtime stories. <laughs> but, um, you know, get your wife to get you a glass of milk and some cookies, and I'll ring you. I'll go, I'll get on to FaceTime or something and and read the book to you. <laughs> right, so you, you fought, I mean, you must have been all over the Maldives, right, in two years. So, for, for the yeah. viewers who are thinking of going to the Maldives, what are your top five sites? I, um, the number five, so start, I, I really enjoy diving yeah. around Marmagilly, you know, the just to see the whale sharks there. Yeah, there yeah. wasn't many weeks where we didn't see whale sharks. That's in the bottom of the south. The boat, at all. Well, weren't they? Oh, yeah, yeah, they're interested to hear the sound of the engine, so they'll literally come right up to the stern sometimes of the boats. So that was a good place for whale sharks. Uh, number four is a, a place called Kudratilla, which is, again, on the the south of South Ari Atoll, really beautiful pinnacle dive or Attila, so like a sea mount, basically. Uh, I really loved it there. There wasn't that many sharks and stuff, but regular manta rays were there cleaning. And it was a whole, a whole area just full of uh, anemones, like 50 or 60 anemones all on the top of one reef. So seeing all that was really beautiful. Uh, number three is Lankin Point, which is not far from the capital, Mali. Uh, that is a, a really famous manta cleaning station. So I saw 16 manta rays there at one time all being cleaned, which was, you know, really, really uh, fantastic to watch that. And then my second favorite place is Razdu. So, yeah, the uh, sharks. Razdu, there, yeah. yeah, yeah. You see hammerhead sharks there. If you do a blue dive, that was really cool to see them there. And then it's got a really interesting uh, topography of the reef there. It's like a really tiny, thin sliver of reef. And then you've got the beautiful deep blue out there. And then there's tons of sharks and Napoleon wrasse. And the, heat, the reef is really friendly. And behind that, you've got a really nice sand patch 
where you see a lot of eagle rays and and white tips and, and other stingrays as well. And then also you can see manta rays feeding in the channel here as well, if you're lucky. So right. that I always used to love going to Razdu, you know, one of my favorite places in the Maldives. And yeah, number one, we were just talking about it a while ago, Hani Faru Bay is my Again, number a manta one spot for manta rays. Right. Yeah, the manta rays there. Uh, you know, I was in there once with about 100 manta rays, you know, and it was... Were they reef never ones or the oceanic ones? Uh, they're the reef mantas there, yeah. Yeah, the pool, yeah. 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 So Hani Faru Bay is very small, right? It's only about the size of a football field. And basically, you need all the stars and the tides and the wind to align. And all of and the food gets stuck crazy. in this small bay. And then all the manta rays go in there at the same time to feed. So if you're in the middle of 100 manta rays, some are barrel rolling in front of you. There's like a train of 40 of them. You know, coming straight at you, you know, just all with their mouths wide open feeding. Yeah, man, that is uh, right, there the it best is. experience in the world. Right. Yeah, beautiful place there. I really would like to go back there, actually. Fantastic. All right. Beautiful, so we, beautiful spot. That's us finish on the Before we go to Palau, let's just have a see. Yeah, that's um, Critter Hunter. He's not great at spelling, as, as you see. <laughs> Brian's a good sport. That's why I would crash his. His stream, yeah, you were always. He's, he's been one of my best supporters. He's, I mean, he actually taught me in many ways how to be a YouTuber. And as you see, we have yeah. a good banter. Um, Kridan used to be a big traveling blogger, scuba diving blogger before the, the. So he used to get flown business class, five star hotel. So that's why he's oh, only nice. like one place in the Maldives. Um, <laughs> but Bar Atoll is on his is on his list. Yes. Right, let's talk about the the, the plough. My, my, my original question was going to be, you know, how did you get a job with the aggressor fleet there? Because I guessed it was aggressor, but you were just, you know, you just applied and and got probably one of the most plum jobs that and probably truck in the fleet, right? Yeah, I actually I met the the two boat managers of the plough aggressor when they came to the Maldives uh, for a trip for a ten day trip down in the southern atolls. So I got to know them pretty well. And they said to me, Chris, if ever you want a job with us, just give us a call. And we'll bring you on straight away. So, yeah, that was always in the back of my mind, you know, as a, the next place to go as soon as they said well, that. Was that so a boat manager or as a dive professional? Um, they were both dive instructors, but they actually managed the boats. It was kind of strange. They, they lived in Hawaii, actually, and they managed the boats from Hawaii. So it was kind of a strange setup there. No, but, but you, what, uh, was your, yeah. what was your role on on, on the Palau Aggressor? Uh, I originally I just went there as um, as the just a dive pro, just a dive master at the start, and then after a couple of months they put me on as a cruise director and uh, video pro. So there was already staff doing them roles already, but then they got moved aside after after me being on board for a couple of months. All right. Um. So, you know, and that was really the end of your sort of Liverpool career then, wasn't it? You, you met the love of your life, I guess. Yeah. Someone's enjoying yeah, my life. Say hello to them. Like, yeah, like hi, Beverly, if you're watching. Huh? The kids are probably watching Octonauts instead, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Cridanda wants 100 mantas. Well, you know, when you go to the Maldives for manta, whale shark, Diving it is the luck of the draw, as Chris said. Yeah, everything's got to align. But that's right. In general, you can generally find mantas in some part of the uh, Maldives at some at different parts of the year when, when the monsoon changes and that sort of sort of stuff. I do have some manta stuff coming up. Nod, nod, wink, wink, hint, hint. Um. So, how long were you in Palau for? I was in Palau for just over a year. Right, and then what was the driver then to you know to come back on shore? Um, I guess it was looking back now. I guess it was a subconscious decision to have a family. I guess you know to be honest, deep down, um, I didn't really want to do that while working on the liverboards because you know you work in six weeks at a time typically, and then you get two weeks off. So. I guess I was kind of wanted to get away from that. Yeah, I and, mean, it's a, I mean, you, know, you did it for what five years or something? Yeah, or over something? over six years. Yeah, in total. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. if you were in the military, you'd got you'd got a special medal. Yeah, yeah. 
should be a general by then, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. You'd have a bloody chest full, you know. Right. Crude Hunter wants to know where is Chris now? He's actually sitting on the beach at Scandi Divers in Porta Galera. In Porta Galera, yeah. Which we're going to talk about very shortly. But before we go on to that, top five dives in, in Palau. This is a diving channel. Yeah. So, I um, mean, number five, I like a place called Sire's Corner, which is um, a little bit from Ulang Channel. Really, this made it into my top five only because of one dive, really, where I saw about 300 gravy sharks all at one time, like swimming back and forth the reef, you know, when we're in the hooking area. So that's the reason why that gets into the top five. So what do you call, what do you call for when it comes to sharks, because I call them all dives the shark diving capital of the world, but it looks like I'm wrong. Would you say yeah, the shark? I would, say, I would Palau. say Palau is better. Yeah, Palau is better for sharks than the Maldives. Um, but I would say Maldives is better than Palau for mantas. That's how I kind of okay. judge that one. Yeah. Yeah. And then, yeah, so... Number four is Blue Holes. So this is very close to Blue Corner. Uh, there's a huge cavern there. Actually, the front cover of the book is actually taken in, in Blue Holes. So that, that picture is actually taken, you know, in uh, in Blue Holes in Palau by my friend John, by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so that's a beautiful dive. It's got beautiful blue light coming in through the, the holes in the reef there. Uh, fantastic. There's some caves at the back with some turtle bones and stuff like that there. So it's pretty cool. Uh, number three is Peleliu Corner. So there was a huge battle on Peleliu. Uh, again, that's a whole there story. With the you might have detail in the book, don't you? Yeah, what? yeah, yeah. So that's another hooking dive, which is good for sharks. And actually, uh, a good place to see bull sharks. I saw a few bull sharks down there. So that was that's number three. And number two is German Channel. You know, just because... Very famous. Uh, you know, yeah, you see the manta rays feeding there. Not as many as... There's the Maldives in places, but still, you know, pretty spectacular. I saw a great hammerhead shark there before as well. A lot of stingrays, schools of scad, you know, pretty impressive place. And then also the manta rays get cleaned there as well, which is good. And then number one is Blue Corner, you know. So in many people's minds, Blue Corner is the best place in the world to dive. So again, it's another beautiful hooking dive with so many sharks. You know, the biggest schools of barracudas and, and jacks you'll ever see really there. So, um, yeah, just a mind-blowing dive. We used to go there about four times a week. It was that good, you know. So, uh, yeah, I would say Blue Corner's number one in Palau. Okay, for me. brilliant. Let's see what Critter Hunter's got to say. Pordo, he got lost on the way to Anila. <laughs> no, you have to go to Anila <laughs> first. Well, near, near yeah. Anila, you have to go to Batangas, of course. Right, so then you left um, Palau and then you headed over to the Philippines. Um, yeah. And you now work. I mean, I mean, the book goes the, into your sort of first um, dive resort experience in the Philippines. It wasn't brilliant because um, you, you worked for two, essentially two guys. One was a, a, a psychopath or something. Who um, <laughs> yeah. the other guy was absolutely brilliant. <laughs> so, I mean, you now work as the international um, sales manager for Scandi Divers. This arm keeps yep. moving because my dog wants some attention. Um, yeah, yeah. Which, okay. From what I know, because you know I've got a friend called Mike Walls who speaks highly of Scandi, it is a highly respected resort in yep. Portugal. But it wasn't like that, was it? You worked for another resort early on, and it sounded yeah. in the book, it was um, really stressful. Why did you put up with that? <laughs> yeah, I, I applied for a job, you know, at quite a famous resort there. And, um, yeah, I was, the interviews were really good. The... The owner I was speaking to was very, very good guy, you know, excellent, one of the best I ever worked with. I didn't realize it, but he had a, a business partner who uh, wasn't so easy to to get along with. So, you know, he basically made life miserable for a lot of people. So, uh, yeah, I put up with it for, for quite a long time. He did help me out. Don't get me wrong. I'm not totally slating him, but he did help me out with the sales stuff and help me get into the sales side of it. So I'll always be grateful to him for that. But the other side of it, it was really, really difficult and, and uh, yeah, almost impossible to work with, to be honest. So I guess the takeaway from that is, you know, there was still good stuff to learn. So, yeah, you can you can abuse the staff. You can be a bit of an a-hole or whatever they call it, the polite word is. But I'm going to take away what I need from this experience. 
Yes. Yeah, that's that's how I, you know, I always try and harness the positive from from everything. And uh, yeah, I, I did learn a lot, you know, from both the owners in a way. But there's only so much you can take, you know, like mental wise before, uh, you know, it, the job starts to to basically make you ill to an extent. Right. So uh, it was best to, yeah, uh, to yeah, take I, away I from it in the end. You were drinking again and, you know, you, the home life wasn't brilliant. And that's just. Yeah. Important. Yeah, yeah, it was hard because we, we used to drink a lot there anyway. You know, it was almost, I wouldn't say as crazy as Utila, but it was getting, you know, we were drinking a lot with the guests every night. And of course, Puerto has got a lot of bars and discos that you can go to that are just down the street. So, yeah, uh, yeah it was kind of easy to, to get sucked back into that, uh, to the bar life. But right. um, yeah, I, but I broke away from it quite quickly. And, you know, my daughter was born around the same time. So I had to really you know, grow up a lot again, sort of thing, you know, to become a father as well. So, uh, yeah, having my daughter at the, was probably perfect timing, you could say, to uh, to break out of the drinking spell again, you could say. All right. So, um, Crudans has been back on. Um, well, you could probably take this up privately with um, Chris. He, he probably knows Atlantis. Um, yeah. If they're a good, good, good brand to represent. Um, he's obviously going to be biased with Scandi. Um, but yeah. I guess what do they say? PM or DM me, and we'll talk. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Give us a shout, Justin. I'll be happy to sponsor you as well. Right. <laughs> Whatever they oh, offer, I'll offer you a couple. <laughs> yeah, you're in. <laughs> you're into. We can no, do a follow-up no, meeting no. here at Scandi one day. Definitely for me at the moment. <laughs> I'll, I'll, you know, um, and there's much people are much better at this than me. Critter Hunter being one of them, of course. Finn Snow being another. Um, I don't know if you follow the Finn Snow channel. That's an excellent channel. That um, Critter Hunter and Justin are really um, collaborating together. Finn, Finn and, and Justin are really doing yeah, some really that. good stuff at the moment, and they've got some really good stuff planned. So for Scandi, I would um, yeah definitely try and make a relationship. Yeah, I would like to uh, do some collaboration with them for sure in the future. It'd be a very good business decision because I know both yeah. of them. They're both they're, they're different as chalk and cheese, but they just get on well. And they're both extremely professional. That's what, because I've yeah. interviewed both on the channel. I know them both personally. I can't wait to get down to Darwin um, and dive with them. Right, what have we got him? Right. Okay. Um, that's the Philippines. So what are your future plans? Going to stay in the scuba business? Yes. Yeah, I'm. I think I'm going to be in this for life by the, by the look of it now. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm still happy to – I love going to the dive shows around the world. I love – still love going on the road, you know, to meet people. So long may that continue, and uh, hopefully we can get and back on well, our feet soon. That, that, is a, that is a Welsh – a bit like the Irish, really, characteristic, is that you're very people-orientated. As a, Generally, as a, as a nation, because – and I think it's because you sing. I mean, the Irish sing, the Welsh sing – um, yes. And they're, you know, got gift of the gab, I would say. So, and <laughs> I, I like the car. You just rent a car, hit the road, work yeah. hard. I mean, you had a small story didn't we? when the pen, and we're not going to go too much because there's another book coming. We'll get into that where you drove 800 miles just to get on one of the last flights back home, right? In the US. Yeah, yeah. So, At the start of the pandemic, so, yeah. So, you've definitely got a, well, a, 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 um, a work ethic. So, let's have a look at a couple yeah. of. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, there could have he's, trying, he's, he's trying to talk his way into things here. Um, <laughs> unprofessional, except on Brian's live. <laughs> yeah, he's letting off steam and now on your channel. For a review on this great book. Yeah, people, there's a there's a book review. Um, it is a great book. It, it is from the heart. So, yeah, I would encourage people to go onto Gary's Facebook uh, page. I'll I'll put a link when, when the video is uploaded in the description so you can get the review as well thank you gary for that right so i know because we've had a chat you started writing already on confessions of a dive instructor too um yeah. when's that going to come out when are you going to publish it i'm up to sixty-two thousand words right now i think i'm going to get to probably around 70 because it's not as uh you know the first book is kind of the whole life but the second book is actually only about the last five years so the reason why it's quite bulked out is because it has stories about me driving around America and driving around the UK, 
you know, with some crazy things that happened there, as yeah, well but as that mixed is in all with related to scuba diving, right? Because that's yeah, what yeah, you do now. it's all it's all clued into diving, yeah. So, um, and also it does actually chart the pandemic as well. So it actually, you know, the big part of it Very is the COVID nineteen. So I've done, I've been writing about that the whole time as well. So that is a big part of the book as well. Again, mixed in with other stories from diving, you know, I, I did include, you know, the last five years of diving here. So there's bits about Quran, there's bits about Apple Reef, Tubataha, you know, more diving in Puerto Galera, a uh, trip to try and go and see great whites in Australia. So yeah, it's still uh, it's not mostly diving, but there's a few, you know, kind of the well, drunken tales from the first book. bring it to life. So yeah, we'll yeah, yeah. yeah. be end of the year, time for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah, I've got it down for December the first on Amazon right now, so I'm I'm hoping to get it finished next month or two, and then get it edited and everything, and uh, you know hopefully it'll be released the the same date as the first book was on December the first. So that's there the plan go. right now. There you go, Critter Hunter. There's my Christmas gift for you. You get it. you get it. <laughs> and he yeah. needs some, he's asking for some tips on publishing. Well, I put you two guys together now. Um, yeah, Chris yeah, I'd be happy to share what I've learned. T-shirt, so hopefully his, his rates are pretty small. They're pretty reasonable. I'm his um, agent, of course. So yeah, <laughs> and remember, as well, she's tight, so you, you can negotiate easy <laughs> with me, Critter Hunter. But it, Chris is going to be a bit tougher, right? <laughs> yeah. Let's finish up now because we've, we've been going at this. I mean, time flies. It's an hour and a half. You know, I would yeah, normally split this into, into a couple of interviews, but you're getting off to America very, very shortly. Yeah. So we've done it in one one hit. We've had some really good comments and people on. Um, Gary was a surprise, but I thank him for that. So let's end up with your top five diving destinations, not sites, in the Philippines. So yeah, I've never been so, to the Philippines. Yeah. I've got a lot of money. I've got you as my private dive instructor, arranging everything. Where are you going to take me? So um, I've got them for my fifth. Best place is Coron Bay, so the shipwrecks there and everything, and places like Barracuda Lake, you know, it's also very, very nice. And also, uh, if you go there, check out Chandelier Cave as well, which is a really, uh, sorry, Cathedral Cave is also a beautiful place there as well to check out. So it's a good all around destination. Or is that just a place to visit? Uh, yeah, it's all diving, yeah. You can take, yeah. Um, it's a little bit of a hike to get the tanks up to Barracuda Lake. But it's really nice to go well, down deep right. there. The water's you're, really, you're really warm. You can take the tanks. Yeah, out. yeah, I can. I can be uh, your your sherpa to get your gear at the top there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so that's Coron Bay. Uh, my fourth favorite place I've been to is uh, Apo Reef. Uh, again, it's a really like a kind of mini Tubataha in a way. Good place to see white tips. Uh, I've seen hammerheads there before as well. Uh, some nice corals as well. Number three is Malapascua for the, uh, you know, for the thresher sharks. Very famous yeah, for that. Yeah, that's on my bucket list, yeah. along with Apo. But um, Justin's going to treat me to Apo, so. Yeah, yeah. So definitely a good place for uh, to see the thresher sharks. I've got number two down as Puerto Galera. I should really put it as number one because I market the place all around the world. But, um, you know, I think it's, you know, a really easy place to get to from Manila. And it's got 40 dive sites with wrecks. You know, muck diving, places like the canyons and the Alma Jane. I really think it's, you know, in my eyes. And also we have thresher sharks as well here. You know, from, from January until April, typically, we have thresher sharks here as well. It's not well-known fact, but, uh, you know, we do have very good. Uh, and they're also quite shallow as well here, about 15 meters on average. You can see them. Right. You've just got yeah. – I wasn't going to ever go back to PG. Because you know, I like Annie Lau, it's easier for me. It's yeah, yeah. Way. You know my situation. Annie Lau is not cheaper than PG, but it is for me. And that's because of yeah, yeah. Um, so you've got yeah. me, you've booked me. I'm yeah. coming, I'm coming to it's PG. It's it is um, really so, good. Uh, you know, of course, I'm, I'm a little bit biased because I've been living here for nine years, so I'm biased. I know the sites very well. You know, I've seen everything that I've that people see in Annie Lau here. So, you know, I'm I, I'm biased. And you've got, you've got, you've got Verde Channel and you've got Verde Island, of course. Yeah, right? Verde Island. You know, you, there's not many dives better than Verde Island in the Philippines, to be honest. You know, it's really spectacular. And, you know, they say it's the center of the center of the marine biodiversity in the whole world by yeah, Dr. Well, Ken yeah, Just, just know, go on. can't argue with that. Go to Critter Hunter's channel and you just see how amazing 
you know, the Philippines as a diving nation is and what it offers. And I think it's in many ways only in its infancy. Infancy. Once yeah, again, it a, is. Lot of, it's true. a lot of um, governmental things sorted yeah. out and understand the diving tourism market fully and what potential it has. I mean, that's yeah. why you know, um, Justin, Andy from UK Diver and myself are, are trying to do this help with the Scuba Apprentice series that Justin's doing, where right. you know, young Filipinos, you know, male and female, can actually think, yeah, there is a, a career for me in diving that yeah. pays well and, and feeds the family. Yeah, it does pay well. You know, if you can get a job in, in one of these, you know, higher end resorts, you know, you can make good money doing this job, probably better than any other job locally, to be honest. You know, it's just, you get paid more here than people going overseas to work. You know, if you get into a good place, you know, that has, you know, especially American groups as an example, you know, they, they look after you at the end of the week. So you can make a living yeah, from it. If you really work the world, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, so we still right, got to do number one, one right? Number one, number one in the Philippines. One. Sorry? Yeah. We still have to do the number one place in the Philippines. That's to it. Dive, right? finish on number yeah. one. So my favorite place is Tubataha Reef. I've been there ah. five times. Yeah, I really love it. You know, it's an absolutely mind-blowing place. Um, I would go every year if I could. You know, it's a fantastic place. Best corals, millions of sharks, whale sharks, manta rays everywhere. You know, it's really... A diver's dream, you know, to go I there, and I really, I really hope. The money. Yeah, yeah, it's I've worth it. It's worth it. And, and the reason I've avoided it is because, you know, I don't like, you know, I should be, I should. Uh, well, you said I've got Welsh blood. I don't like paying three thousand dollars for a week on the boat. I mean, that's the reason yeah, I became yeah. an agent to aggressive fleet to get better deals and free places. Um, yeah. That's why I, I go Egypt a lot. I, I follow um, why I'm going to all dives a lot of them. There's tremendous deals, but I think yeah. I'm going to have to put me and deep in my pocket and spend the three thousand dollars yeah. or whatever it is. Yeah, um, it's a really fantastic place, and it's a well-run marine park. You know, I, I would yeah. say it's one of the best marine parks I've ever been diving in. It's very, very pristine. You know, so they do a good job in protecting it from the the fishing trawlers that are trying to go there and scoop out all the sharks and everything like that so uh yeah i hope i can go again you know next year maybe if uh, things are looking good i would uh, and that's well, a place that, i don't mind paying to go either you know i've, I've been there well, let me know, let me know if you get a good there. deal let me know if you get a good deal yeah 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 <laughs> you know, we can't invite justin because they want to go for free but you and i are <laughs> yeah. a bit of money towards it right let's just end up on yeah. a couple of comments then then say on when, when we end the broadcast we'll have a little chat um david streets Back on, he's, he must have watched the whole good supporter of the channel. Um, he's actually invented his own rebreather. I mentioned that earlier on, but the uh, people who have uh, joined since, the Proteus rebreather from Dive S Systems International, started out as a side, as um, a bailout um, rebreather instead of having to use you know, cylinders and stuff. He wants to know how you spell Tubataha. Um, uh, it's we'll, we'll, T. T U B B A T A H A Tubataha. Tubataha. Yeah. Right. So Blue Corner's now yeah, on your bucket list. And Tubataha tuba is, is as well, Dave. <laughs> and yeah, come with us. Come with us. Bring bring a couple of rebreathers, teach us what to do. It is a banging reef, that's for sure. It, yeah, it is. Fantastic and place. We, we've got to finish up with Critter Hunter, right? It, it just wouldn't be one of my live streams if he didn't have the last say. And he wants to know, have you been to Dowing, Chris? Yes, I've been uh, three times. He's been and three it's good, times. very good for muck diving, very, very good. It's good. I saw it once there. It. Yeah, it was close. It was close you between Toronto and Dowing. Yeah, have to keep it, it was close, keep very back. close. Yeah. But, the reason yeah. why I love Dowing is because I saw 12 frogfish on one dive there once. You know, that is, you know, I've never seen that before. So, so 12 frogfish on one dive, you know, you can't beat that. So uh, it's a really good place. Yeah, I've been there quite a few times. So uh, it was very close, very close. Also, uh, there's so many good places I missed out. Even Analau didn't make it into the top five for me, you know. So <laughs> I'm sure it's uh, going to cause some arguments for sure. <laughs> well, you know, I think if, I mean, I've got reasons for Analau. It's, you know. Yeah, yeah. 
I because yeah, when I've, I've got my kids with me, the diving costs a fortune, so I organise all my own. I can do it there. I've got kit place there, so that's why I do yeah. Annie Lau. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, I would go with PG over Annie Lau just because we've got more stuff around each. Yeah, I, would say. I mean, yeah. when when I, when I dive with one of your competitors, because um, I didn't know Scandi, and I'm not going to mention the name. I mean, it's just brilliant <laughs> going out for four dives a day. You do two in the morning, come back. Have your lunch, go yeah. out to again, all, all off a small boat. Brilliant. And yeah, it's so easy. You know, that's another reason why it's so high, because it's some of the most convenient diving. The longest boat ride is 15 minutes away, you know, so you can't beat that. It's really, really uh, best place, I think. Really convenient diving. I would say one of the best. All right. Well, we'll, we'll close it there. Thanks, everyone who's okay. participated. Um, yeah, thank you, guys. For going to watch this after it's uploaded. I just want to end on two messages. Please support Chris. It's tough for diving professionals at the moment. So please buy his book. How much is it, Chris? It's uh, the print version is $12.99 US and the ebook is $8.99. Price of a couple of beers, right? So help Chris out, um, get him motivated to, to produce, get the second one out in time for Christmas. I would appreciate it. He would appreciate it. Times are hard in the scuba industry. And the second thing is we'll put the link to Scandi Divers in. As I say, they've been recommended to me before. And if you do go diving in Porta Galera, you know, just get hold of them, ask to talk to Chris, and he, you never know, he might do a deal for you. Um, he's in the yeah, business of winning business. So yeah, mention Brian Davis Scuba, and he'll do something for you. So on that note, yeah. we're done, as they say. Great interview. Um, hold on. Crit Hunter's back. Just about to finish. <laughs> oh, we already discussed that, right? Yeah, okay. All right. Yeah, that one's the center of your world, Justin, but it's not the center of everyone else's, but it is really good. <laughs> so on that, it is very good. That is very good. Say, as usual, we love him to bits. <laughs> Go and support his channel. That's Critter Hunter. Amazing channel. All right. I'm rending it there.